suggested by your overwhelming and overwhelmingly gratifying reaction to last night's special comment. We real Americans each have our own feelings of disappointment or disgust or outrage over President Bush's recent remark, and as it turns out, his recent lie that he gave up golf to honor the war dead in Iraq. So in our third story in the countdown tonight, we'll attempt to view this through the eyes of those who have actually made a meaningful sacrifice with Paul Rykoff, who was a first lieutenant and platoon leader in the Iraq war from 2003 and 2004, and will join us presently. It was the most self-centered and callous part of President Bush's interview with Politico.com, a claim that at least symbolically bested a string of other ridiculous statements within the same discussion. When the president was asked, you haven't been golfing in recent years, is that related to Iraq? Yeah, it really is. Uh, I don't want uh, some mom uh, whose son may have recently died to see the commander-in-chief playing golf. Uh, I, I feel I owe it to the families to be as, you know, to, to be in solidarity as best as I can with them. And I think, you know, playing golf uh, during a war just sends the wrong signal. Of course, then Mr. Bush pinpointed the cessation of his golfing career as the day that the bombing in Baghdad killed Sergio Vieira de Mello of the U.N. On that day, he explained he was pulled off the golf course with the news, quoting, and I said it's just not worth it anymore to do. But the factual problem with that, de Mello was killed on August 19th, 2003, as we noted yesterday, on October 13th, nearly two months later, there is the commander-in-chief playing golf. The NBC News archives today belching forth this even more infuriating videotape of the game two months after he gave up the game. The Associated Press account describes the president's outing with three longtime buddies at Andrews Air Force Base on a cool, breezy Columbus Day. Eighteen holes and one huge lie in a little over three hours. As promised, let's turn to the executive director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and the author of Chasing Ghosts, Paul Rykoff. Hi, Paul. Hi, Keith. Good to be with you. Can you put into uh, the intro words... The reaction of vets just to this nonsense about golf? It's disappointing. Uh -huh. uh, I think that's, that's a, a diplomatic way of saying it. Uh, I was in Iraq when the attack happened on the UN, and uh, I think I, I and others have been continuously disappointed with his personal and emotional connection to the war. Uh, I think Tiger Woods is probably breathing a sigh of relief, but the president hasn't given up clearing brush. He hasn't given up riding bikes, so I don't know why he picked this as a specific example to note of what he's given up to, to honor the war dead. In terms of that, I mean, is there a way also to quantify how much of an apology he owes to the troops um, in the field or in rehabilitation or in the ground? I think he, he owes them a, a generational shift in the way we care for these folks when they mm -hmm. come home. I think he owes us fixing the problems of Walter Reed, cleaning up incidents like the problems at Fort Bragg recently, dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder, providing educational benefits. That's a chance to, to pay your debt to these veterans, and I think it's not just the president, but all Americans owe them that. What about something tangible and immediate? Uh, instead of say, you know, I'm not going to play golf anymore. I, this knee injury and my, uh, my 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 meniscus problem. Those are there's just coincidences that these all happen at the same time. Right. Uh, why, on earth, is he not backing the new GI Bill? Uh, that's a great question because it seems like everybody besides the president and Senator McCain are. Mm -hmm. uh, it went through the House today, a historic vote. Uh, the GI Bill passed through the House by over 90 votes. Wow. Uh, today is a, is a historic uh, day for the fight in the GI Bill. It's become an unstoppable force. It's got over 59 members of the Senate, 23 governors signed on yesterday, including uh, Republican Governor Tom Ridge, the former governor, mm -hmm. and every major veterans group in the country. So for the president, he's got a choice to make. Uh, is he with veterans or is he against them? And, and it's going to end up on his desk in the next couple of weeks, and he's got a historic choice to make. We talk about this in terms of symbolism and the, and the anger that it causes with vets and, and the rest of us, the guys who are just sitting back here in the comfort of, of, of what you have secured for us. What does it mean practically when a guy who is charged with the outsized moral responsibility of the nation somehow equates loss of 4,000 lives and countless injuries, to say nothing of the civilians in Iraq and all the bystanders and all the money and every other opportunity wasted. When he equates all that with golf, what does it mean for military people and military families, practically speaking? I think it means he's out of touch. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it compounds the divide that already exists between the military families and, and our service members and the general public. Less than one half of one percent of the American public has served, compared to about 12 percent during World War II. So we have an unprecedented cleavage that exists between the American people and our service members. And when he makes comments like this, he doesn't help connect them with the people behind the war. He doesn't put faces on numbers. He just makes that divide even deeper. Right. When he calls for sacrifice, and it turns out his sacrifice is supposedly golf, yeah. then we, we're just going backwards. Nobody yeah. knows what the hell. Well, they have golf on. in Iraq. 
Well, yeah, not. I'm sure they do. <laughs> uh, Paul Rykoff, founder and executive director of Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans.